Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and innovators who are transforming health. I'm Logan Plaster. My guest today is Christian Pasquale, CEO of Medic Door. Christian, always good to see you. Thanks for joining me today. Likewise, Logan, a pleasure to see you again. All right, we've talked before about what you've built, this, this really interesting triage tool for helping people get the right care at the right time, but just break down exactly for me what you've built. Yeah, well, you describe it. I mean, we, we help people when first symptoms are raised, to know what to do next. And this is an unsolved problem worldwide that typically Dr. Google takes the place and maybe ChatGPT also right now, but not in the way we do it. We replicate the conversation you would have with a trained physician, friend of yours, uh, and with really easy questions and uh, we follow the path through your symptoms uh, to provide what to do next and the possible disease that could be related to your case. So let's just say I'm a patient and my health system has medic door. I am at home and I think maybe I have the flu and so I'm, I'm concerned, should I go in, should I not? I would get onto the hospital website, how would I access medic door? Yeah, you can access in many ways, but depending on each client decides how they want to okay. interact with you, depending on... So it's kind of white labeled? Yes. They incorporate it the way they want to? Exactly. Okay. So uh, we just launched it with two health systems in the US, and yeah, in these cases, it's open for everybody in their website. So if you go to Columbia Memorial Health website, you can find, check your symptoms there okay. and then you can assess the symptoms and finally uh, you will choose from the existing possibilities that this health system provides uh, on what to do next. We guide uh, on what should be your best next step. How does this differ from me using WebMD's symptom checker or some other just random symptom checker on, online? Well, I think in many ways, I think the user experience is different, uh, it's better. Our most, you know, our uniqueness is in the first step because the natural language processing that we have is the most uh, advanced uh, in the world, has okay. 45,000 synonyms of symptoms in 16 languages, Got so it. it's huge. So you can express how you feel in your own words and it will go really sharp to, okay. to the right questions. And also it's about the outcomes. I mean, the outcomes, I think that as a user, what you want is to be precise. And we are obsessed with that, to be precise. And then the, the other advantage is that when it's linked to a health system, for instance, right. we can suggest the next step that it's suitable for you in relation with that health system. Yeah. So it makes even more sense. Yeah, the stereotype and the joke with symptom checkers now is that you tell it you have a headache and it tells you you're gonna die. Yeah. You know, so it's just always sort of giving you a worst case scenario or you might have this disease, creates fear. So you're saying that it's, it's sharper, it's more accurate, and then it guides you towards care versus leaving you just afraid. Yeah, right. I mean, I think that, uh, well, this only happens in the U.S., that symptom checkers has been more time around, and let's say with all approach on, on how to solve this, system, this problem. So we use AI, natural language processing, and machine learning since the start, so everybody that try our system can see the difference in the outcomes. Yeah. Okay. Last time we talked, you told me you were working on expansion into Japan. So tell me kind of where that stands. Well, we already launched with AXA in Japan, and uh, I think it's, it shows the uniqueness of our technology in the world, and, uh, because entering the Japanese market with a big player like AXA, it's a great achievement, and, and it allows us, uh, as a reputation for Asian market, now to pursue more clients in that region. You're a global company, born in Barcelona, yep. now, uh, beachhead in the United States, working in Japan. How challenging is the, is, and yet you're working in natural language processing, how challenging is the language piece of what you're doing? Well, it's, it's a challenge, but we solve it. I mean, we can uh, translate our system to any other language that we don't have today in about three months. Okay. And of course, there is then a learning process on the natural language that each region uses, and we try to be really sharp on that. So we differentiate even with UK English from US English, or 
Spanish in Spain from uh, Latin sure. America. So sure. the way that people express symptoms is different, and we take that into account in our system. How do you feel like the public's understanding of ChatGPT has influenced the way they might accept something like an AI-driven tool like yours? No, a lot. I think that uh, ChatGPT overnight changed the mindset of everybody. And in our favor, because now when we approach clients, they understand that we can solve real problems with artificial intelligence. Yeah, they've seen it. Yeah. So uh, now it's much easier to convince clients that we can do uh, good for them and that our application really goes well. So yes, it's good for us and it's, it's an advantage now. So it's good from a public relations perspective. Yeah. What about from a technology perspective? Does it open up new tools for you? Well, we've been exploring, but um, not exactly. I think that ChatGPT is a radical different approach from our approach and has some challenges in healthcare because ChatGPT is a black box. You cannot uh, know, sure. even the developers know uh, or explain why a result was shown. This is challenging in healthcare. We use a white label, a white box uh, technology, so we can always explain the results. And also, ChatGPT, how it's now trained, uh, can show incorrect uh, responses, and that's a warning that you can see when you enter it. That's not acceptable in healthcare. Yeah. So, I think, uh, well, uh, we will see more yeah. things. Uh, evolving, but I think that ChatGPT is not really a nice tool for healthcare. Well, yeah. it's good, it's better than Dr. Google, yeah. but it's still not, I would say, a, a medical device or something yeah. really serious in healthcare. But it's so interesting that it's had this side benefit of opening up a conversation. No, absolutely. And allowing people to, yeah, allowing normal consumers to say, oh, I understand what it means to converse with AI, to have a chatbot no, that exactly. is smart. So the jump then to a triage tool makes sense. No, absolutely. And I think it's the most uh, game-changing innovation since uh, the launch of the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's been incredible, the, the effect. And, the, well, everybody's talking about sure, sure, sure. these days. So 2023, what are you most excited about? You've got Japan. You've got a couple of hospital systems in the U.S. Yes. Uh, what's next? Well, uh, really to scale in the U.S. with health systems, I think that now uh, we have a really strong value proposition for them, demonstrate attraction with use cases. So... I think that this year we can really excel in growing in the U.S. with health systems. And also glad to uh, talk to payers in the U.S. because payers are our main client outside the U.S. And of course, we can also do a good job for them. Very nice. Christian, always great to hear from you. Uh, it's going to be a big year. Uh, it's exciting to see these market forces kind of coming together into an inflection point for these kind of important triage tools. So I'll be excited to see what happens next. Thank you, Logan. Always great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect.